Welcome to another tutorial. Well, last time we uh, we programmed a little bit, and we were left here. So actually, this is an HTML producing C file, C program. So let's actually change the title. Let's say MVC CGI with C++, okay, capital C, and the tag, compile it, before I forget it, and let's refresh the page, there we go, the title has changed, and there we have it. So what I'm gonna try, what I'm trying to do here is to develop an MVC uh, pattern, this is a well-used MVC pattern, it's stands for M stands for model V stands for view and C for controller this is basically a really really good pattern to use when you have a big website and I really like it so the problem with this is the problem with using C for developing such things is actually you have to uh, be cautious about what you're writing especially this string because as you know in HTML there is something like this source when you leave it like that and compile it uh, you won't be even able to compile it let's show me that there it says there is print wasn't declared in the scope or oh, okay that was actually bad so let's try it again it actually compiles. That's really weird. Let's see if it's actually doing right. There we go. It's actually seems to be working. That's odd. There we go. It doesn't work. Cause let me show it again. There we go. That's right. So you have to concatenate this or you have to escape this characters when you put in something like that and let's say okay there's no such thing like source but it'll it'll be able there we go it'll be able to run so what I'm trying to say is this is actually not a good way to do it but we're going to make some prototypes and then we're going to fix and do it better. So let's get started. Okay. First thing is uh, we need to create an HD access file because MVC needs to rewrite something. It kind of works like uh, you have you have this URL here and you're going to use it for page navigation. When you put in something like I don't know, maybe error.php, that's the usual pattern, or better to say I'm a PHP developer, that's why I'm writing here a PHP. When you enter that, you are using actually another file, which is called error.php, you have an index.php, and this MVC pattern kind of solves this problem, and you have to just put here index, and you're gonna go to an index page that's rendered and you're gonna go to an error. In fact, you have a subfolder, let's say maybe 404, and you're gonna enter and you're gonna see something like 404 not found and it's gonna be really, really handy for you. So, I, I'm actually gonna uh, use another HD access file, which I already have for, from a PHP project that I've developed before. So let me quickly find that. I'm sorry for that. So actually see WAMP. All right, that's the folder. And I have here another project. This is actually a PHP site. I'm gonna put it right in here. Okay, I have that HD access uh, thing actually enabled in my WAMP server. So you have to do it on your own, or I'm gonna put in the description. Let's open up actually that HTXS file. Let's go one, 
directory. Up. So there we go. As you see, this is like a next.php. I'm gonna change that. This is the first line uh, enables the re rewrite engine. That is actually something like that. You have an index.php file, and what you're doing is you're using this uh, variable URL to navigate. When you put in this URL, you're going to go to the index, you're going to go to the error page, and this rewrite engine is going to do that on itself for us. We are not going to go ugly like that, it looks a little bit pretty. The three lines of codes actually uh, needs to be written down to have it work because it's a directory, a file or link. So if you're rewriting something, you want to avoid the three uh, types of rewriting. Okay, here is a little bit of complex uh, line actually, but what it does is it's redirecting and rewriting our URL. I'm going to put in here index.cgi and I can put everything I want. Let me just leave it like that. And let's open up the page. Let's see what happens. All right. You see, this is pretty important. Let me show that. When I remove this HD access file, let's put it all uh, right, seems to be all right. Let's put it in the source folder. I have to cut that. God damn it. All right, sometimes it's a little bit tough to use Windows, so there we go. Open up the browser, refresh, and there we go. It says the requested URL is not found on the server. It's actually looking for a page, and when I put my HD access file back where it was, here on the main URL, and refresh this page, there we go. What here is written down is this here. It recognizes this as a vari variable. So that's the first thing. It's, it's really handy to use that. Let's come here and so the thing about this CGI idea is uh, you're using your server as a local PC as you would use a local PC. That means sometimes you have programs maybe a.exe and you can input some arguments maybe a file name, maybe dates, or maybe any arguments you want and usually we get this arguments in here remember this int arg c or excuse me that was I guess char arg c int arg v or some kind of stuff like that the reason I'm putting here a void is I'm not gonna expect some inputs in here the only way I'm going to use inputs or outputs or what I'm doing here is actually using this input output library, the standard output. This is the standard output printf, which you might expect to write in, write out like here some kind of stuff, but that's actually our page. And when we get an input, maybe that's URL, maybe something else, you get that input from from the environment. So there's a function for that. So we are going to declare um, a variable for that. Let's say data. Let's put it equal to nil. Initialize it actually. And I'm going to read the data before I print out, print out that one equals to get environment. So there's an environment variable that's called query underscore string which is useful to read the whole URL. So I'm gonna print f uh, 
actually, yeah, that's good. Let's print it out on the website. So, what I'm expecting here, when there's nothing written down, before I'm gonna do some stuff, let's compile it actually. Compile it, there we go. Let's open up here and refresh it. Okay, it's already working. So, point of this is, I'm gonna write here index and I'm gonna see that here. And maybe error, there we go. And when there is nothing, I have to check that out too. So, here is actually data contains our URL. So, what we are gonna do later on in the series, we are gonna um, implement a really complex function which handles all the stuff, all the pages, all maybe the functions, the controller functions, and it's gonna be really messy and that's another problem with this approach because you're gonna get really really long source codes. So, another problem with this is you have here maybe let's say URL equals to ASD. So the problem with this is you could actually the user could uh, could manipulate this really easy. When he wants to get error he could try it by hand. So to prevent this there's there are the forms. Uh, let me actually write quickly one down. You have to use the form. If you're actually developing HTML, you probably know this one. There's a form tag. Let me write it like that. Let's print f maybe an input type type. It it's kind of getting annoying to have to write down these two characters maybe but you have to get used to it so let's say it has a method post and action isn't really going to be a big thing stay on the same page and that's okay I'm sometimes a little bit confused input type text there is no action action belongs to the form so what I have to write down here is the name actually let's say data there we go we have to fix that real quick and I'm gonna put in here some submit button let's say input type Submit and again you have to fix this escape stuff and let's end the form like that. So let's build it, no errors, that's terif terrific. There we go. Okay, I should actually change the language, sorry for that volume equals submit. Let's kind of compile it, go to the page, refresh, there we go. So, later on when we're developing it, uh, okay, let's actually do that. So, later on when we develop it, we're gonna write the controller name, maybe error, and then the function, prints, and then some parameters, maybe code, maybe message. This is going to be our structure because it's the MVC pattern. But later on the user could actually change the message from here. Let's say he writes something else. And that's not a good thing. I don't want to do this. I don't want this to happen. So what I'm actually do instead of writing it like that and using it like that I'm gonna use this form and it's gonna be submitted. 
So that's the basic idea. And I'm going to use the method post. And let's write in that one. So compile it. Let's see what happens. It should happen nothing. OK. It just navigates. It's refresh. It refreshes. The action gets done. And we are going to, we want to be able to get what's in this field. Maybe the name, and we're going to submit, but we're not getting it. So to implement that, we have to check for the query string, something like the query string. And let's do that. OK, it's going to be the str length. We're going to check for the length. If that's not zero, then it means we have something submitted. And let me actually paste it down. That's what we're actually going to use. Let's print f the length. There is an environment variable content length, which gets the length of the posted stuff. It depends a URL. You're actually aware of it. You are you know that probably. So it's something like that URL. And when you post something, then the reason why we have here the name of it is because this post method builds us actually some kind of stuff like let me look what that was. It was data. Data equals maybe. ASD and it says maybe some other some data to equals uh, some other stuff so what I'm going to do is in this case the length of this could be acquired with this get environment function and this parameter so let's actually print out let's try to print out maybe there is going to be an error or some kind, of stuff, some kind of stuff like that. So I'm going to put in there a bracket. So another thing is you never put an N like usual. You put a break, an HTML break to have a line break. So we have a little bit of problem because I renamed it like that. So that's better. I guess another problem which is long to ends. OK, sorry for that. Gonna, it's going to be a alley. And another one. I'm kind of getting used to it. What's really the matter here? I really, I'm really confused now. This long str. All right, that was my Problem. I'm sorry for that. It, it does make sense that you have an integer, but it never happens. It's always a string. Let's try that. There we go. So refresh it. There we go. It asks for that. Now it's null. When I submit that, it's six. So that's really cool, actually. Let me refresh and do it again. So now, if I check this variable, this variable len str, if I check that one, if it's null, I could say it is like someone typed it in manually. But if if I'm using the form, it gives me a the length. So that's a way to control how it's done, if it's manually or not, if it's a form posted. So it's, this is really, really important for your security, actually. That's it for this tutorial, guys. I apologize for my bad English and stuttering. See you next time.